Please listen carefully. Hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summers McKay. And we're part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to make it one focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy, I'm wearing a tiara-worthy podcast. Today is Friday, the 30th of October, 2020. And so, yes, yeah, Summers, you're dressed up for Halloween with your tiara, and I'm wearing my, my Coffee Needs Coffee t-shirt, so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have kind of a funny story about tiaras and Halloween. So let me start this by saying that I am wearing a tiara in my driver's license picture. And I have been for the last, gosh, I guess 15 years. No, 10 years, 10 years. Yes. Okay. And the reason is because after my first marriage ended, I had to reclaim my last name and I had to do all the paperwork and whatnot. And I went to the DMV, the sort of the last step in this whole shenanigan was to go to the DMV and get a new driver's license. And it happened to be that the only time I could make an appointment that worked for me was on Halloween. Well, as many of you know, I'm fairly certain I'm a Disney princess. And I usually wear a tiara on Halloween as my costume and then just make a funny joke about saying, what costume? What are you talking about? So I went into the DMV and getting a new name is very easy. Getting your unnamed is very, very difficult. And so you have to bring in all of the paperwork. And I, I brought in, I had to bring in the actual divorce decree and this huge stack of paperwork to the DMV. And I put it down on the lady's desk so that she could confirm it all. And she just laughed and she looked at it and she joked with me and she said, how much did that cost you? And, you know, it was kind of sort of gallows humor on Halloween. But everybody in the DMV, you know, was wearing a hat or wearing, you know, some sort of minor costume. And I said, do I need a picture? And she looked at my tiara and she said, oh, princess, why, yes, you do. <laughs> and so I went. And the guy taking my picture was wearing like his pirate's hat. And they took my picture with an actual tiara in it. And then ever since, every time I go to the DMV to get a new picture, I wear a tiara. And because the precedent was set by the nice lady back at the Santa Monica DMV back in 2000, I guess 10 it was, I get to wear a tiara in my DMV picture. And that <laughs> is my happy Halloween story for the morning. <laughs> Well, hello, princess. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and what I like about that story is that it's also really positive about the DMV. You can have great experiences at the DMV because some of the people there are really nice, even though it is sort of reputed to be the last bastion of sanity, but or of losing your sanity. So anyway, on this Friday before Halloween, before November, before daylight savings, before a full moon. In Bizarro World, in, DMV exactly. is a fun place to go. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today, my dear? Well, I'm not wearing a tiara, but I'm optimistic. <laughs> I'm all right. I do feel like the pandemic has been huh, dragging on. And I, I've been hearing a lot about pandemic fatigue, which is unfortunate because I don't think that it's stopping anytime soon. I was talking with a good friend of mine who's in Italy right now, and two of her neighbors just came down with COVID. One who had no symptoms at all, and the other was a young woman who she ended up in the hospital on oxygen. And so it's it, there's a pretty heavy resurgence happening in Europe right now. Germany and France are both locked down. Italy is going in that direction. But the people are really not, they don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. And I think if there's ways that we can mitigate our behavior without being completely separate, that's maybe a median kind of thing. Anyway, that's a little bit distressing. And to right. hear some of the things going on there. But it's also some of the creative forms of protest that like were interesting. She was telling me about how the restaurants are upset because now they're, they have curfews to shut down at 6 p.m., which is nobody goes to eat dinner before In, in Italy. God, right? no. You know, that kind of kills their business model. But what they're doing is they're opening at 6 a.m. and serving until 6 p.m. And they're taking over the squares where the chefs will put out tablecloths just on the ground 
everyone's coming out to have their lunch and their dinner early. <laughs> and so it's an interesting kind of a protest energy happening there. And um kind of sounds like fun. <laughs> I, I love it. So the Italians are revolting by eating <laughs> early. <laughs> they're, they're eating early. <laughs> it's it's so, how Italy handles the pandemic. They're like, more bread, cheese, and wine. Just, let's, just, let's, let's, let's just stay up and have dinner at 6 a.m. <laughs> you know? <So. laughs> That's really funny. Well, look, you're absolutely right. And the intensity in the world continues to be very emotionally challenging. We are certainly seeing people heightened in frustration and just even, you know, from a little teeny tiny window into how our customer service and customer support team is having to deal with it. Folks are getting a little frustrated with passwords and just the emails that are coming through. You can get a sense that people are just more frustrated than they have been in the past. It's an emotionally inflamed time. So I would encourage everybody to go back to kind of their emotional inflammation learnings that we had from Stacey Colino and Lisa Van Sestren, because we will get through this, but things have permanently changed and the holidays coming are going to be intense. And yeah, it's not over, but we are here and we are optimistic and there are things to be optimistic about. Like Christy, what are you optimistic about on? The story that that caught my imagination today, I just really loved it. I wanted to talk about it. The headline reads, capture carbon in your yard with these mycelium balls. And basically, mycelium has been proven to have some incredible potential to support a number of different kinds of industries from biodegradable plastics or biodegradable plastic packaging to non-animal leather. And it's sort of this interesting material that is a very sustainable and it also is a carbon sink. So there's a startup called Net Zero that has created a mycelium orb, which looks kind of like a bath bomb, you know, that you would dissolve in your bathtub. But instead of putting them in the bathtub, you dissolve them in your watering uh, irrigation system and that you irrigate your lawn with this mycelium. And once in the ground, the dissolved orb will inoculate your yard with mycelium, which is the thread-like feeding structures of fungi that helps to draw carbon into your lawn. And I just think this is such a creative, interesting approach that I'm a total mushroom lover, right? But it's sort of fun to think about seeding your lawn or our backyards if you don't have a lawn, like I don't really have a lawn, but with mycelium, this mycelium ball. Is there a benefit to the lawn? Yeah, I think it is. It also helps to improve the soil. It can help to, it's non-toxic. It requires almost no maintenance, but you can't use fungicide on your lawn anymore. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But I don't know. I Actually, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it ends up looking. I don't think it does much to the lawn itself. It just helps to uh, reinforce the soil underneath. And by doing that, it helps to draw more carbon into the soil And so it improves the soil health. Right. We have little areas of our yard that have just terrible soil health. And you can see little areas in our yard where stuff just doesn't grow and then other areas not too far away. And I've attempted to resolve that by using coffee and tea, you know, ground coffee Mm -hmm. and tea and putting them in those spots. And it does help a little bit. But I wouldn't be surprised if this helps that area. It might help. Yeah. And apparently if every yard did this, Every average size American yard were to add uh, this mycelium to their backyard. Each yard could absorb a ton of CO2 out of the air every year. So if all 40 million acres of lawns in the U.S. were to use one of these mycelium balls, our yards could go from capturing 650 million tons of carbon each year to 1.3 billion tons of carbon every year. Because they it just yeah. like they, they become carbon sponges. To quote the founder of the net zero company, Joseph Kelly, he says that a lot of times people are shut down to climate solutions because it feels overwhelming or doom and gloom or shame based. But this is like a fun, they wanted to make it a fun experience. And also it's supporting good soil friendly, non-toxic improvements. We live in an agricultural area, as you know, Christy, and there are cicadas, which is, I think it's also known as the Japanese beetle. And We're having this rise in cicadas that we've never seen, really. And what that suggests is that they are actually going after some of the agricultural crops nearby. 
I get very stressed about it because on a certain level, I do not want these big, huge pincher bugs anywhere in my yard where my daughter might pick them up because they're very slow moving, but they do have quite a pinch. And then at the same time, I don't want aggressive curtailing behavior of, you know, pesticides to take hold. And so I love it when we find solutions like this that can actually improve soil health and possibly reduce the risk of, you know, the wrong kind of pests taking hold in a given area. So I think this is a Kickstarter, well, right? Can we? It's a, yeah, order it is a Kickstarter. Guys? Yeah, it's a Kickstarter. And I think that you can order it early for $69, but actual orb themselves will cost $125. So it's a little expensive, but part of the sales of each orb goes to fund the Sacred Rivers Climate Project. You know, they do donate part of whatever cost of each orb to a good nonprofit. This week we have orbs and we have sunglasses. Yeah. We have lots of things to purchase from the Optimist. Which are me, potentially, these are all good kind of Christmas presents, next year birthday presents for people that we love. it would be sort of fun, but also social benefit. Exactly. All um, right. Well, yeah. you know what also would be a fun benefit? Okay, that was an <laughs> awkward transition. But the story that I picked today talks about both senior health and pet wellness. And the headline reads, the nonprofit ramps up to efforts to help lonely seniors adopt pets. So during the pandemic, the experience of loneliness and the high levels of stress have certainly been accelerated in, in particular for our aging population. One of the best things we know to help the elderly is to have pets in their life, to have animals, to have those non-judgmental, although with cats there is judgment, but those <laughs> relatively non-judgmental loving creatures. But it can also be very challenging for a senior to own a pet because whether it is affording all of the pet care or regularly making veterinarian visits and ensuring the pet's health, it's not just an easy solution, right? You can't just get grandma a dog. But what this organization, Pets for the Elderly, has done, they're expanding their grant program to include animal care assistance at participating shelters. And basically, their mission is to help connect people and pets and assist them in caring for their companions. It's funny because Cleo's like howling in the background right now. I don't know if you get that <laughs> noise, but she likes this story too. It's very interesting because the benefit is not only for loneliness and companionship, but seniors tend to take better care of themselves when they have someone relying on them. They're more likely to take their vitamins, to regularly go for health checks because they have someone that they are responsible to care for. So I really, really like that this is ramping up and that we are seeing an expansion of this organization, which has already helped nearly 100,000 seniors countrywide pay for these pet adoption fees. And now they are expanding into care and wellness for the pets as well. Which it makes a lot of sense because I know from being a dog owner and a multi-pet household that sometimes it feels a little overwhelming to have yeah. to walk the dog, feed yeah. the dog, you know, feed the fish, feed the snake. Although, you know, that only happens once a month. But there's a lot of care that you have to take into consideration every single day. And so having any, even just a little bit of support can make a big difference. And also if you're, if you got a real tight budget and you get some help with paying for little food or shots, that can be a huge help when owning a pet. And it's true when you have somebody else to take care of, you take much better care of yourself and it gives you more meaning in your life in addition to companionship. So I think this is a wonderful story, Summers, and good on you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will not be adopting any more pets in our house. Actually, it's funny. We talk about medications because Copper, one of my kitties, has a daily medication that he takes, his anti-crazy meds. And I realized that we've been running low for about a week and I keep forgetting to call for a reorder. So I actually have the medicine sitting on my desk. So at some point in between meetings today, I'm going to have to call and, okay. uh, and get him his <laughs> anti-crazy juice. Well, speaking <laughs> of animals, I'll just read another couple of headlines today. Oh, I love this. Uh, next one. I love uh, it. Love it. Our lead story today, indigenous Siri people are releasing a record number of sea turtles in Mexico. Uh, this has been a very good year for baby turtles, a resurgence all over the world. And this is an, another species down in Mexico. Good story there. There's a new plant-based packaging material that might replace single-use plastic in some drinks. This is, includes Bacardi, PepsiCo, and others. And it's a easy to biodegrade water bottle. So that's kind of interesting to track that. 
There's a self-driving ferry in Norway that can be hailed with the push of a button and it doesn't have its own pilot. It just takes you across a river. And that's sort of an interesting new area for autonomous vehicles, water taxis. There's a new study finding omega-3 helping heart patients to have longer lives. Another study on diet that just some simple dietary swaps can prevent two-thirds of heart disease deaths, and that includes moving towards non-processed diet, and that's super important to think about if you have heart issues. Stripe customers can now donate directly to carbon capture products. Nanofoam material could make footbell helmets endure repeated impacts. And a living coral biobank is being created to protect Great Barrier Reef for generations to come. That is a mouthful, Christy. I know. (laughs) Usually I jump in and we go back and forth on that, but you just like had it. So I was just letting you go. But I imagine you're a bit tongue twisted and tired at the moment. So I will say great job. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. Have a wonderful Halloween and All Hallows Eve and a fantastic All Saints Day or Day of the Dead the Optimist View that is coming out this Sunday for our emissaries. We'll talk about some of the early traditions that have evolved into contemporary Halloween. Uh, Marvin Lanes, one of our editors, has taken that task on. Look for that on Sunday, and everybody will say happy birthday to Marvin because he took it on because that's his birthday. So (laughs) thank you, everyone, for listening to the Optimist Daily Update. We promise to continue to share positive solution-based stories with ideas on how you can participate in this changing world and ensure it is changed for the good. We promise to cover the current events with accuracy, legitimate sources, and offer you the information needed most to chart new paths for all of us. Please consider becoming an emissary on TheOptimistDaily.com and for just $5 a month, support reader-funded independent journalism and be a part of the solution-changing consciousness that addresses our world's biggest challenges with a problem-solving mindset. Let's keep The Optimist Daily free for all who need it, supported by those of us who can. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a very safe and uh, fun Halloween weekend, and we'll be back on Monday with more solutions. 